Hey, Tom. Hey, JC. Good to be with you, buddy. Good to be with you in this fine day. Daylight? It's it's day. Yeah. It's day. It's so bright in here. It's rare that we do this. And when we do, it's it just feels weird. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, I'm I'm not half asleep. I'm not kind of like laying on the bed as the mic is next to my head and <laughs> right i'm not we're not gonna be able to as we talk listen to me start to drift as the show goes along yeah potentially i don't know i'll drift in a different way my attention will be somewhere else yeah i'm not i'm not coming into it in a delusional state after work and having no energy left and like let's make dumb jokes i'm yeah. fully awake and ready to do this tom yeah all right so we probably just should, right? Because we got a we got a loaded show to. Yeah, and we're not going to talk about hockey because that's the wrong podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I kind of want to talk about that too, but the the stupid Kane signing somebody right before we record. Right. <sighs> I know. Gonna be. Don't they? Don't they know our schedule? <sighs> I wish. You know, if we ever get that wrestling night in, then <laughs> we get to do that. <laughs> That live version of the podcast during intermission. Yeah. Both of those things are equally likely to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah, but this week, uh, we got three major shows this weekend, so we have a lot to talk about. I mean, I don't know if we'd call the two and third a, one two and major. A half, two and a half. I think, given the context of, of where, where, it's, where it's being hosted... Uh, and what it's hosted against is uh, yeah. kind of elevates it, right? I think from its perspective, it is its major show. Like, it, it's a big show for them. Yeah, it's true. So we're talking about Evolve Saturday Night Live against AEW's Fight with fight for the Fallen. Evolve A. <laughs> yes, that's the... Uh, Mexican promotion. Yes, that's the Lucha uh, WWN promotion. Uh, and then uh, Extreme Rules on Sunday. So... Yeah, it's a it's a good weekend for wrestling. It is. I'm excited. Do so you want to talk about it? Yeah, let's let's do that for the hell of it. All right, can you do me a favor first? What's that, Jason? Can you ring the bell? Sure enough. You're listening to the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast, a proud part of the Section 328 Network, bringing you all the best in wrestling from WWE, New Japan, and beyond. Now, live from ringside, it's Mr. Workrate and JC. Oh, buddies! Um, it's the Cheaters Never Pin podcast. My name is JC. Here next to me at the commentary table to the stars is my good buddy, Mister Work Great Tom. Good to be here as always, JC. Isn't it? It is, especially when I'm awake. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like being half asleep here, just stare like with all the lights off in my apartment, just staring into these monitors. <laughs> It's cool, but I, I feel like sometimes, and, you know, the audience will probably agree with me, but that sometimes I don't bring enough energy to the show. So, like, now it's, like, 1030. I'm usually up. I mean, I slept until 730 today. So it, that that's actually a big sleep day for me. Uh, so I'm, you know, I pumped. I got uh, my work done for the day because Friday is a shorter day for me. And now I'm just pumped, ready to go. All right, let's let's dive right in then, right? So oh, I guess, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to like cut you off. No, I just. <laughs> do we do we want to go chronologically here through the weekend, or do we just want to we want to start with uh, Extreme Rules? Your pick. Um. Now let's let's go chronologically. Let's let's make them. You know. All right. Let's let's make the WWE marks wait. Ooh, I like that. Like how they're marks, unlike the AEW universe, or I can't wait till they come up with a buzzword. It's gonna happen, and then everybody online's gonna be like, "That's what we are." I'm like, all right, calm down. Yeah. Uh fight for the fallen Saturday night, starting at seven thirty. The buy in eight fifteen. The main card free on Bleacher Report Live here in the U.S. Uh, I think you have to buy it everywhere else. Uh, fun. A uh, fun note. Jesus put this in context uh interesting note about the show it is a charity show so they're donating all the proceeds to victims of gun violence in jacksonville florida they uh the idea for that came up after the the 
Madden shooting last August in Jacksonville. So, very cool touch yeah. to the show. We were mentioned last week, we were talking about how mm. quote unquote woke AEW is, and that, that kind of puts the, the needle back in their favor, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so let's run down the card on the the uh, the pre-show, the buy-in. Sunny Kiss takes on the librarian Peter A- Peter Avalon with the librarian Pete, uh, Leva Bates. <sighs> Tom, we Tom. love Sunny Kiss. Sunny Kiss. Is we cool. love Sunny Kiss. I just, man, this this librarian thing. Maybe, maybe there will be something this time. I have no so, hope for it. So here's the thing. As an old ECW mark, some of the best gimmicks in ECW were the worst. So maybe something comes out of this, uh, uh, some kind of odd charm that, yeah. you know, they kind of roll with or whatever. It could be horrible. It could be. I, I feel like I this, I feel like this match is the last chance for it. Yeah. I think so because everyone kind of started to turn on it after uh, Fighter Fest, and now it's like uh, I don't know. Well, this is more of a turning point where after this, you can figure out whether or not you want to almost take this the way that it was intended to go, or you could potentially take this and just go completely in the opposite direction. And go, we know this is a bad angle. Let's make this even worse to almost laughable content yeah like, we know it's bad let's mst3k it right and there's been no there's been no huge development in it on bt or any of the road to fight for the fallen episodes so i'm like are they just abandoning ship on this i don't know we'll see also <coughs> ooh, excuse me also on the uh buy-in six-man tag action Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allen, and Joey Janela take on MJF, Sammy Guevara, and Sean Spears. That'll be fun. That that's pretty big for a quote unquote uh, pre-show. Yeah, and I also like that it's the crazy ass death match baby faces versus the heels. <laughs> yeah. I just, that dynamic is just kind of fun, so I'm interested to see what what occurs there. Could we possibly get something uh, with the hardcore guys? Maybe a little lack of communication going and potentially splitting off from there? Or maybe an angle maybe. out of that? Possible. I don't know. Let, let, let's just watch it and enjoy it and see what happens. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, main card. Uh, Brandy Rhodes makes her AEW de- debut against Allie. Is she? What? Is she what? No, I'm just saying, is she? Because the last time we, Brandy kind of made her, like, it, she made it seem like she was going to, at a, a Double or Nothing, made it seem like she was going to wrestle, like, introduce herself as, like, the fourth person into, and then she brought in Awesome Kong. True. So, um, are, are we, are we going to do this kind of like WWE like thing where it seems like Brandy's going to wrestle and then she's like, Oh, wait a second. And then bring in potentially awesome Kong again, or I think it's possible, but given the angle they've kind of been shooting on the, the road to fight for the fallen with it all being about her confidence and all the training she's been going through. And she talks a lot about when she was younger and she was a figure skater and, you know, the little competition she'd be fine in, but then she'd get to the big ones and her, you know, she, she'd get in her own head kind of and crumble. And, you know, through professional wrestling, she's been trying to overcome that. And this this is her chance to do that. And, you know. So uh, they're baby facing her. Kind of. and But they had, so conversely, they have Allie cut a promo on the last episode that came out yesterday, episode three, I think, uh, where... She talks about, you know, she she really respected Brandy for coming out and saying all that because she's had a lot of the same issues and, you know, she's been working all over the world and, and she, you know, she feels confident and ready to go out there and put on the best match possible. So 
neither of them came across really as a heel to me in this. I think if you look at some of the, the Twitter content, Brandy kind of reads more as the heel. But I mean, that's that's where I've seen her like in the past. Like it, it seemed like they positioned her as a heel. But now you're telling me about the the kind of baby face type promo that 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 leans it in one direction. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm making gestures with a water bottle right now. So if you hear clacking or sla- <laughs> sloshing, <laughs> it's because I took a drink of water and I muted it when I took the drink of water and then I unmuted it because I was done drinking, but it was still in my hand. And now I'm making hand gestures on an audio podcast. That's fine. That's really for the live audience of yes. of your cats. Yes. <laughs> Are my cats. <laughs> I've closed the door. They're probably mad. And oh, yeah. the True. Uh, Kenny Omega takes on Shima. That'd be cool. Yeah. Not a star here. I mean, just just I, a match. I, I'm good with it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it, it's not a lot to talk about nope. necessarily or whatever. It, it's going to be a good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam Page takes on Kip Sabian. Okay. Another match. Yeah. Should be good. Uh, Tag team action, SoCal uncensored. Uh, so and it's actually Kazarian and uh, Scorpio Sky, okay, who are going to be in this match, taking on uh, uh, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix. Okay, again, that's, that's looking forward to it. Match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a three way tag team match to uh, advance to a first round bye in the World Tag Team Championships. Uh, Dark Order. Versus Angelico and Jack Evans versus the Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. I don't know why I called him the P Jungle Boy, but okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's a good way, I think, to. I mean, we still have to kind of introduce the tag scene more so. So it's a, another opportunity to showcase the tag scene. And whoever ends up getting this by is going to be seen as, okay, here's someone that we're putting some focus on. Mm hmm. Uh, and then the, uh, what I assume will be the main event. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Cody and Dustin take on the Young Bucks. I haven't been watching uh, being the elite or anything. Have they made any reasoning why this match is happening? Like any kind of strife necessarily or something between no. Cody there's, there's, and the Bucks? There's none of that to it. It's just they wanted to sign a good match and this is, you know. Because it's just kind of weird to me because that that whole group, that elite group, is just, you know, it, it seems like this is, you know, a stable, essentially. I mean, they're not necessarily acting completely like a stable, but it's still kind of how you, you still see it. It's, it's, it's Bullet Club without being Bullet Club, essentially. But you're having a main event match where members are facing each other, so it's just kind of weird to me but i guess it's a thing of okay you know we're running the company we want to have a good match we'll fight each other yeah i mean that's that that's the main part of it they've done a couple little things so like uh the bucks mocked uh the the end of double or nothing or not the end of double or nothing but the end of that cody dustin match right uh Cody and Dustin cut a promo on one of the road of five for the following episodes where they talk about, you know, all right, the young bucks want to do that. Well, you know, and talk about they've, you know, no one's really, you know, we weren't a, we weren't an important tag team and we didn't really do very much, but you know, they've not, they've obviously not gone back and watched the history of us together, you know, talking about everything they did together in WWE. So there's a little trash talk, but it's nothing. I mean, nothing major. All right, well, there's at least something, so okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're putting a little bit to it, so. But again, they're, you know, the whole promotion's at a point where they're not, you know, invested in telling super long-term deep stories right now because there is there is no television product to support that, so. Right. <clears throat> so that's Five for the Fallen, Saturday. I'm I'm looking forward to it, as always. We're actually get through that quickly, so. Yeah. That's what happens when we're awake? Right, yeah. Well, and then, you know, like I just said, there's not a you know there's not a lot of story backstory to talk about because ninety percent of that are just you know here's some matches, which is fine. That's yeah. I have no problem with that on a wrestling card sometimes. 
that's that's the thing with wrestling is it doesn't always have to be you know every pay per view or major event doesn't have to be the culmination of seventy four feuds all coming together. Yeah. I mean that's I I hate to go back to. Well, I mean, back in the 80s, 90s type day, I mean, you'd have like a couple of big feuds that would resolve at a pay-per-view. But a lot of times it's like, hey, here's a big group and, you know, here's here's the tag team and here's another tag team. Be cool if they fought. Like there's no necessary. You look at those old WrestleMania cards like they just put people against people because, well. You know, that'd be interesting. These are mm-hmm. these are two top guys. They should fight each other. Like it's almost like in the rankings where you'd have, oh, okay, well you're the number three contender and you're the number four contender. We'll put you two guys against each other. That's, yeah, that's there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to be well. I mean, and I just went through a thing of why are you know the Rhodes brothers fighting the Young Bucks, but it's true. The, you don't necessarily have to have something, especially if you don't have TV, like you said, to back it up. Mm-hmm. So you can have each side cut a promo and be, and call that call it a day. Yeah, it's like you got assigned the match. Like, okay, well, you know, the big pay per view is coming up. Who am I facing? Oh, I'm facing this guy. Okay, huh? I'm facing you. Well, let me cut a promo on you, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you think about it, you know, you look at combat sports in reality, right? You know, in in the UFC, for instance, you know, you've got people making the matches. Right. And 90% of those are just two people thrown together. But then you've got, you know, the top end of the card, those are the people calling each other out, the ones that are, you know, trying to work their way up the card to fight for a belt. And this, you know, give it that kind of feel, right? Right. I mean, it, it, I mean, old school, again, like the old school cards, you'd have, say, one of the easiest babyface roles was, okay, you know, I'm newer to the company or I'm working my way up and I want to be a champion, but this guy is in front of me because he's been a champion before or something like that. I've got to fight him because, you know, he's he's got the history, so i got to make a name for myself, that type of thing. That, that's all you need. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily need, like, and that's something that WWE has been doing forever is been just the opposite of, well, these guys are going to face each other in a, you know, pay-per-view match, we need somebody to, ju- we need one to jump the other in order to be able to justify the match. Like, oh, it's just, it's a match. Yeah. Let a match. Sometimes a match is a match. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so, while Fight for the Fallen is going on, Saturday night, live on the WWE Network, the first non-WWE show will be happening. Evolve 131. Live from somewhere. <laughs> I think it's in New York State somewhere. I can't remember. Yikes. They're like live Saturday night. I'm like, is Bobby Moynihan going to be there? For the 39th consecutive year. <laughs> it's the, the Evolve Bobby Moynihan Memorial Show. Uh, <laughs> um, We're starting to get into a little Rick and Morty here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> um so WWE kind of hyped this up a lot especially on Raw which I thought was interesting including an entire video package uh which was weird seeing some of these some of the evolved guys on Raw I was like I was very excited for them like that's really cool but it was just kind of like a huh all right then <laughs> but there but you know this was scheduled without you know, even thinking about AEW, according to Triple H. Oh, of course. Of course. This just appeared. It just happened. Um, the, the, uh, the the main part of this is them kind of acknowledging Evolve has kind of become the a supplementary developmental territory for them, which is true. They have a working partnership with Gabe Sapolsky and, and WWN for that. Um, and some of the NXT talent has been going back to Evolve to work. Uh, and this card is no different. So here's a, here's a quick rundown of this card. Uh, Brandy Lauren versus Shotzi Blackheart in a singles match. Cool. Yeah, you're going to have to help me on this. Oh, you're going to have. I was hoping you'd know who these, some of these people were. We'll, we'll see. I'm I'm not that deep. I'm not that deep into Evolve. 
or any any of the WWN stuff, FIP or or uh, Catchpoint either. So I I for one am disappointed. I'm sorry. I have to. I have to there's only a certain number of hours in the day, <laughs> except during WrestleMania week. <laughs> so which one is this? Is this? Uh, let's see. Today is the twelfth. So tomorrow. Okay. So it's the one in Philadelphia, one thirty one. So they're having a show the following day too. Yeah, they usually do back to back days. All right, so so it's essentially this isn't necessarily a special show. No, for them, this is a show for them. But right, they are counting this as their tenth anniversary show too. It's a couple. It's I think it's a few. It's a couple months off, but this is what they've been promoting as their big tenth anniversary show. Okay, okay. I'm just I, I just pulled up the card now. I do know some of these people. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's, well, now that we're past that match, at least there are names I, under, I know. <laughs> uh, Eddie Kingston and Joe Gacy uh, take on AR Fox and Leon Ruff defending the Evolve Tag Team Champions. Championships. Nope, don't, don't know them either. Yeah. Uh, nope. AR Fox. I know who that is. Sure. Should be a Got good it. match. All right. Okay. Kurt Stallion and Sean Maluda and Stephen Wolf and Harlan Bravado in a fatal four way match. Harlem Bravado is a very good name. I, I like that name. Uh, a special challenge match. Baba Tunde takes on Colby Carino. I know Colby Carino. I know Baba Tunde. Look at that. Uh, Tunde. That name sounds familiar. He was on something recently. NXT. Okay. Yes. Was he? At, was he in one of the uh, the Saudi Arabia shows? Mm, uh, maybe I try to block those shows out of my memory as soon okay. as they happen I, I will look for that as you okay uh, in a grudge match Anthony Hendry versus Arturo Ruiz I hope I pronounced that right I probably didn't uh, okay and then we actually get to the matches of names you'll know here we go JD Drake who's the WWN champion uh, takes on Austin Theory the Evolve champion in a winner takes all match uh I'm not super familiar with J.D. Drake. I am familiar with Austin Theory. Uh, I'm very glad he's getting this showcase. This is a this is a big moment for him. Uh, also, Austin Theory is featured a lot uh, in the 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 wrestlers episode on Viceland uh, that focuses on Gabe Sapolsky and uh, Evolve. Man, I need to watch that. I've got it. Re- I've got it set up. It's in my queue. I just have it. Yeah, watch it. Watch it today. Sometime. Watch it before. Uh, before before tomorrow so you get a kind of a exposure to austin theory i um, thought when i saw he was on that episode of that, i was like i was really stoked so i will quickly intervene here oh, yes. baba Tunde was in the greatest royal rumble as the 37th entrant ah, okay and was eliminated by braun Strowman. i thought that name sounded familiar because right. as we were joking about the greatest royal rumble we were going did the saudi arabia guys think they were getting giant baba right that's, so. that, that was the joke. All right. Yeah. Uh, in a singles match, which is, this is the future is now showcase match. Uh, Josh Briggs takes on Anthony Green. Uh, there are promos about this that WWE actually tweeted out. All right. So if you want exposure to these guys, go to WWE's Twitter account. They're right there. Uh, and then uh, in a catch point reunion match, Drew Gulak takes on Matt Riddle. Do you, know those, do you know those people? I, I, I am aware of both those people. Okay. Drew, Drew Gulak is a champion. Yes. His his uh, cruiserweight title does not come into play here. And Matt Riddle does not wear shoes. Correct. Well, bros don't. They wear flip-flops and then kick them off. Yes. And I'm just waiting for one to smack a, uh, <laughs> a fan in the face one day. Sean Maluda, okay, I, I remember him. Okay, yeah, he's. I think Sean Maluda was in. He was in Cruiser Cruiser Classic. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Because he was one of the relatives of somebody. He was he a. Uh, he's one of the Samoans, right? I was going to say, is he related to the Alpha? <laughs> yeah, group? he is correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. I remember him because he wrestled. What and I'm just looking it up. Yeah, he he fought uh, Kodo Bushi. So right, 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 right. So oh, I think yeah. that was the opening round match. 
North okay. Dakota, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and then the NXT Championship is on the line. Adam Cole defends it against Akira Tozawa. Boy, are you expecting a title change, Tom? I'm putting money on it. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool if it happened. I'm not going to lie. That would be cool. Just, to... <laughs> just to screw with people. Like... I mean, just you know, just give it right back to Cole somehow. But just that's do what it. I, that's. I mean, I look at things like. Uh, I mean, we've been to a couple of house shows when WWE's come around. Like, to just go, why not? Like, mix it up a little bit and actually have a title change. That way, you can advertise. Hey, this title changed hands at a house show. You, schmuck who's sitting here watching this on TV, mm-hmm. you should come out to a house show because sometimes the titles do change hands. Right. And you even add that layer of, hey, and if the house show's not near you, make sure you're subscribed to the network and you watch everything all the time. Yeah. It's like when they, uh, it's like that, was it the MSG show when they had uh, Styles take the U.S. title that time? I was going to say, AJ, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's one of those things you do every once in a while. You obviously don't want to flip flop time, but you know. Yeah, you're not going to have it on the C team uh, house show where, you know, nothing's you right. Know, Four thousand people, or you know, whatever. And if anything, you just change the twenty four seven championship every house show because <laughs> you just there put the video go. on Twitter and call it a day. But I mean, that's that's <clears throat> part of the advantage of the 24-7 title that works out. That was always the cool thing about, like, say, the, the WCW TV title where it was, you know, it wasn't a big deal if it did change hands. It's a big deal if, like, the major, you know, the world championship changes hands because that's got a lineage and that's, a, you know, no one cares that, I mean, like, the hardcore title you had like crash holly held it like 27 times like you know Mm -hmm. just have fun with it so yeah almost have like a house show title that gets defended every once in a while and actually can change hands right yeah that's cool that's a great pop i mean because even if it is everyone wants to see a title change like yeah yeah um so that's saturday night That, that is a busy busy night and I think the Evolve show is at 8 o'clock, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, 8 o'clock. Okay. So, get your two screens ready, folks. So that's what I'll be doing tomorrow night. <laughs> so, live, though, um, just looking at the rundown of that card. Uh, so, if you happen to be in the Philadelphia area going to the 2300 arena mm-hmm. which sorry it's the ecw arena yeah um not only are they having that card but uh champa and gargano are also going to be there for meet and greets as well as matt riddle drew gulak tozawa and adam cole <laughs> yeah and matt riddle so a bunch of meet and greets and yeah, you know, DIY will be there too, yeah. as well. So. Do that Saturday before you head to the Wells Fargo Center on Sunday for Extreme Rules. That's transition, folks. Right? That's, and I think that's also a big part of the reason they're doing this, by the way, is because uh, the equipment's already there. Right. <laughs> they just need to carry it down the street. I'm assuming. I just like to think the ECW arena is next door to the Wells Fargo Center, even though I'm sure it's buried in some different part of town. I'm trying to remember. It's, I mean, it's Philadelphia, so it's still kind of like twisty around or whatever. I don't think it's that far. I just remember wanting to get the hell out of that area as soon as possible. Yeah. It's not a great neighborhood. <laughs> what? No. You mean indie wrestling's may- not in like some bright, shiny armory? It might be better now. And I, from the pictures I've seen of the now 2300 arena, it's actually much nicer. And before you get into Extreme Rules, I will kind of throw a New Japan note in oh, yes. right here. Go ahead. Um, just announced at the G1 uh, show that they had in Dallas, um, they had the regular card, but in the middle of the card, they announced that uh, New Japan was doing a small... U.S. East Coast tour again, where they'll be 
doing shows in Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. Um, and the Boston show, I don't know where it's at off the top of my head, and I don't care because screw Boston. But the uh, Philadelphia show will be at the 2300 Arena. So EC New Japan in ECW. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, 1997 work rate is marking out big time. <laughs> and the the New York show will be held at the Hammerstein Ballroom, which uh, is actually a also great awesome. place to watch wrestling. Uh, yeah. I know um, I saw Major League Rest- uh, MLW, the original MLW before it's come back with Court Bauer when he first – uh, tried to run the promotion, which then ended up fizzling out, and then he did the other stuff they did. Now MLW is back, but the original uh, promotion that he ran, uh, I got to see in the Hammerstein Ballroom. I know um, Ring of Honor works there a decent amount. Uh, they've had uh, other promotions have run there as well, but well, of I course mean, it... WWE's been there many many a time. Well, they they. They ran... One Night Stand was in there. Right. Now, the Hammerstein Ballroom is technically not to be confused with the Manhattan Manhattan Center. Center. Right. Which is where Raw was. Same building, different floors. Mm Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, it's it's still the same type of environment. And yeah, it's it's a really cool place to see a show. So, it's cool to see New Japan's going to be in both those locations. And ideal... Um, attendance type things for shows like that. Yeah, uh, I felt bad watching G One because oh boy, those pictures of that. And it was not, it wasn't the show for them to be in. And people were uh, like, part of the New Japan defenders were saying, you know, the first night of G One wouldn't be held at like the Tokyo Dome; it'd be held at like a place that has four thousand people. Yeah, in it, and I don't know why they did that in Dallas. They got the building for free because of okay. Mark Cuban. Then that's it. Yeah. Okay, so also, yeah, so that makes sense. But running it on the Fourth of July, too, uh, yeah. on the Fourth of July weekend, uh, it's not a not it's not a great weekend to run a wrestling show, or really I mean, anything. The crowd was still good. I don't know how, I mean, it would have sounded a lot better in a smaller arena, mm-hmm. but. I think too, if you, if you run something like that, and I realize they did that because they can get the building for free, but you run something like that in a, in a large kind of vacation destination on the 4th of July weekend, it's a different game. Right. So, but people, I, I don't really consider Dallas, Texas a vacation destination. Not in July. <laughs> As someone who's been there in late June. Yeah, sounds... Oh, God. Yeah. I know what it's been like here in North Carolina for the last three weeks. I do not want to go closer to the equator. In fairness, it's not as humid as it gets here, but... Hot is hot. But, like, <laughs> 105 is 105. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, for our uh, non-American listeners, that's about what, like forty? Sure, Celsius? something like that. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, also, my issue with that is um, there are already enough issues with personal hygiene at professional wrestling shows. <laughs> Do you really need to be doing it at the peak of summer in a place that's one hundred and five degrees? Uh, forty Celsius is one hundred and four Fahrenheit. So. Ooh. Go me. Nice. Good work. Speaking of... the Vancouver paid off, man. Right? <laughs> uh, spe- my metric knowledge. Speaking, yeah, of issues, speaking of issues with personal hygiene, let's go back to Philadelphia. <laughs> that, my friends, is a segue. Ah! That's two of them today that have been yeah. good. Uh, Extreme Rules Sunday on the WWE Network, of course. Uh, as far as I know at this point, there is nothing on the pre-show. So something on this card is falling off. Probably this 
tag team championship match. <laughs> if history, sorry. if history, if memory serves me right, uh, that's probably where we'll go with that. Wouldn't you think? Um, sorry, I had to waste a little bit of time to pull up the card. Um, <laughs> I don't know the. I I always assume that the cruiserweight match is going to be pre-show. There, oh yeah, that's true. There is one. All right, and there's usually, well, yeah. All right, who knows? We'll see. Uh, it's either the cruiserweight match or I would say probably the Raw Tag Team Championship match because they just kind of added it, and it's also the Usos, and for some reason they hate putting them on pay per view. <laughs> Even though this is going to be a Usos, banger of a match, the Usos are for the people. Yeah, so they should be free. Correct. Um. All right, here we go. Extreme Rules. The Revival take on the Usos for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, it'll be great. So, <laughs> I can't wait. It's Extreme Rules, so can we mix this up a little bit and have this be like, I don't know. They used to make up rules for tag team matches. like It's the no flips, just fist match. <laughs> yeah, the, or the... Well, We'll have it like Bill Watts rules where you can't throw anyone over the top rope. You can't do moves off the top rope. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. That would be great. Like NWA rules. Like, like uh. we get the revival just hardcore <laughs> goes into. Yeah. That would be cool. That's a free idea, guys. Yeah. Feel free Take to run that. with it. Uh, so that, but it'll be a good match. I may tweet that out to Dawson and Wilder and see. You should. What yeah. Do it from our do it from, do it from the podcast account so we get some clout. Okay. <laughs> uh, Braun Strowman takes on Bobby Lashley in a Last Man Standing match. Now this was actually built well. Like they did. <laughs> well, stop. let's let's pump the brakes there a second. Okay. All right. It was kind of done well. I mean, <laughs> it started out well. The the entire crash through the set angle, awesome, loved right. it. That that's where I took off. Did something else happen after that? Then you let Bobby Lashley speak. <laughs> the promo not last week, but two weeks ago, where it was him like on the cell phone footage. Awful. <laughs> where he talks about he's basically going to murder Braun Strowman. Lashley's just not a convincing talker. They should give Lashley the promos they've been giving Shelton Benjamin, where he just looks around. Uh, Maybe that actually was supposed to happen, and, you know, some kind of racist WWE guy is like, I can't tell the difference between these guys. Oh, I don't know which one is which. (laughs) I didn't imply it was Vince, but okay. <laughs> Come on. As if there was anyone else that we were thinking about. Uh, Ricochet defends his United States Championship against AJ Styles. I thought you said Ricochet was the racist guy. Like <laughs> That would be a hell of a storyline. It would be. That's, that's a, and it's a, it would be on Raw, so that's a Heyman special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate my skin. That's why I need to cover it with all of the belts. <laughs> so I don't have to look at it. Oh, I love that shit. That's good shit. <laughs> <sighs> oh, boy. We should really do this with less sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ricochet takes on AJ Styles. Back on track. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun match. I know the club will obviously be out there. Yeah, I'm kind of glad the, the club is back together. Itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a good match. I, I could, I could see them flipping the belt and having Ricochet then go on a chase for a bit. I could see that. I could also see it ending, oddly enough, in Extreme Rules in a disqualification where. Maybe some kind of interference does happen and allows 
them to continue the feud. That's true. There is no stipulation on most of these matches. <laughs> As is Extreme Rules tradition. Correct. Uh, Cesaro knocked on the door and Alistair Black was waiting for you in a singles match. Three's company, too. I was going to say. She said to finish it. I couldn't let. I could hear it in my head. It's like somebody pressed pause and the note just kept playing in my head. And I was like, just finish it. Don, not special guest referee. <laughs> That's extreme. Because he's dead. It's extremely dead. <laughs> The Ghost of Don Knotts, which I'm pretty sure is a Disney film. <laughs> I feel like it would be from the time uh, where they would need to bury it next to Song of the South right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this will be... This is a match. <laughs> I get to see Alistair Black again. Yeah. I think... And, I, you obviously They've obviously built it in that direction, right? Like, he's yeah. the one they're putting the focus on. And, I mean, I'm looking forward to that a little bit of new character for Cesaro and the kind of, like, I don't know. The, in that promo, he kind of had a little bit of a serial killer vibe to him, so that's yeah, I'm, cool. Yeah, I'm enjoying, like, crazy murderer Cesaro. Let's, let's keep rolling with that idea, right? For two weeks, he's just murdered Noe Jose. I mean, he's he's not a lifeguard anymore. He's not, you know, the James Bond ripping his clothes off guy. Which I miss. I'm going to be honest. It was enjoyable. It was hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, now he's just now he's just kicking ass. Yeah. Which is should have always been his character. Yeah. I mean, he's not a talker necessarily. No. That's why they've shoved a mouthpiece into him to be like, shut up. Dude lost his teeth. Come on. Mm-hmm. You're right. Uh, the SmackDown Tag Team Championships are on the line in a triple threat match. That's extreme. It is. <clears throat> and, um, now, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I know it's a triple threat match. Should <laughs> are this we, not are be we a three-way d- We're in Philadelphia. Should this not be a three-way dance? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, there'd be two uh, people wouldn't be able to follow it. There's too many people in the ring. That, oh, right. Your entire reasoning. Well, I guess. Okay, so it's just one of those I can tag whoever I want type things. Correct. Okay. So well, it's not really a three way dance because a three way dance would have would be a tornado match where everybody's involved in right. doing things. Okay. Yeah. So this is the much boring way. Okay, got it. Yeah, this is the dumb way. As we've as WWE continues to come up with ways to ruin professional wrestling stipulations <laughs> due to let's not wrestle during commercial breaks anymore. <laughs> Which they don't have to worry about on pay per view. But this is still awful. I, I'd like to think of it as like because I'm not at live events, like when they hit commercial breaks it just sounds like when they do the promo reads during podcasts it's like and then one two oh two cat let's go to commercial friends do you experience odor from your cat litter you know just like they completely stop and just turn to the audience break the fourth wall and just daniel bryan just grabs the microphone he's like i really wish brie was here because i just took two blue chew <laughs> Everybody's like, why is WWE plugging Blue Chew? They're like, well, it's wrestling. <laughs> I'm glad that's slowly becoming a meme about all of wrestling online. Why, 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 why do we not have that sponsorship? I, Tom, you, uh, you know what? I have no idea. <laughs> Get on that. You're the business guy. Okay. I'll work on it. Uh, Anyway, Daniel Bryan and Rowan against Big E and Xavier Woods against Otis and Tucky. Just put the belts on heavy machinery. Just let's burn. Let's burn. I want to see the world burn. Let's just do it. I mean, it'd be, it'd be very good. I'm not saying watch the world burn in a bad way. No. But I mean, it was. And it's obvious that Vince doesn't care about tag teams. So let's have some fun with it. Right. Uh, I mean, 
we did that with Ryder and Hawkins for a little while. We did that with the B team. We did that with um, um, Heath Slater and Rhino. So why not? And this is an actual team. Yeah. It's not just a, <laughs> we put two people together and let them draw on a t-shirt with Sharpies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... For Vince supposedly not liking people getting themselves over, people sure do it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Dave. Uh, Drew Gulak defends the Cruiserweight Championship against Tony Nese 24 hours after his clash with Matt Riddle. So could that open the door for Tony Nese to to regain the championship because Gulak took a beating from Matt Riddle. I say there's a 99.99% chance Drew Gulak sells not a thing from the night before. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they're going to acknowledge that was a thing. Well, no, it didn't happen in our ring. Yeah. So for, I mean, WWE is going to plug it, and then the following day, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just immediately be like, let's take you back to last night. Uh-uh. They just immediately file it in hidden gems. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where did that go? Well, funny story. Speaking of which, I will address that after we get done. Ooh, okay, this. yes. Uh, a handicap match for the SmackDown Women's Tag... Women's... Jesus. Ha- blah, 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 start over. Handicap match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey defends against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So shut latest... up, black weird talking tube behind me. <laughs> phrasing? Are we yeah. doing phrasing every week? Okay. <laughs> um. So apparently, from I guess Meltzer, I don't know. Alexa got a sinus <laughs> infection. <laughs> I I knew we'd have to do a Meltzer impression. Um, But yeah, that's why Nikki Cross is in the match because Alexa's got another malady. So, although I thought we were just building to this anyway. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's worked anyway. Yeah. Obviously that that's the direction it's been going. So it doesn't hurt it at all. You know, I think, I think uh, clearly the end game here is Nikki's probably going to pin Bailey. Alexa will then become champion. Oh, right. This is a handicap match. I thought it was a three-way match for some reason. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alexa will then become champion. And then Nikki will be like, well, can't I be the champion too? And Alexa will be like, nah, girl. Yep. Sit in my coffee. So. I don't know why I like that gimmick, but I do. The coffee. I don't. I. I think it just worked when she just walked to it with the ring that time. It, it was that just, was that was it. It was. Yeah. It was perfect from that moment. It was such a matter of indifference, like <laughs> whatever. I I can't be bothered to put this down. Yeah. Uh. Kofi Kingston takes on Samoa Joe and defends his WWE Championship. I want, I want Joe to win. He's not going to. I know. Is it bad that I'm kind of like over Kofi as champion already? I get it, but at the same time, I mean, I don't... I'm ready for him to lose the title. I don't have anybody that I want to put it on. Yeah, that's true. I don't know that Joe's the right direction to go, but as much as I love Joe, I, just, I don't think it's the time, right? Because remember, I think I think Joe's time has passed. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, also I think Kofi retains because we've got to look long term, right? We've got to look towards anything with SmackDown having to do with October, right? And Kofi would be a good way to have that belt and then lose it to Brock Lesnar on night one on Fox when he cashes in his Money in the Bank contract. Oh, but isn't he cashing it in? No, he's Sunday. He's not. He's absolutely cashing it in on the first episode of SmackDown. But Paul I, Heyman said. But he said that he's already said that before, right? As as it's not, you know. Yeah. 
So they're they're trying. They're trying real hard to slow play their hand here. Yeah. But I have X ray vision and I can see the other side of the cards. Would that how it would, is that how it would work if you had X ray vision? I guess you'd see through the cards. You yeah, you would see through the cards. It's like Damn it, Vince, I can see your underwear. It's like when they talk about X ray specs and they're like, Oh well cool, you know, you can, you can see under people's clothes and stuff. No, you would see like skeletons. It would be horrifying. Yeah. And technically yeah, yeah. Vince, I can see your spine. Yeah. Weird. Right. Uh no holds barred tag team match. The Undertaker and Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre. Yeah. I too like a good freak show. I mean <sighs> The Undertaker's music's going to hit. That gong's going to hit, and I'm going to mark out, because I'm human. There's a child inside of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My soul hasn't completely withered up and blown away in the in the wind yet. Uh, that'll be... It's whatever. At least it's no holds barred. That's the saving grace here. And I would assume The Undertaker and, Ro- and Roman win, right? And... Maybe maybe Undertaker actually buries Shane. And I would say actually I mean that. like not in kayfabe. Like Shane gets buried and we never have to see him on TV again. I'm never assuming that. I know. Uh and then your main event of the evening. The man and the man's man. Oh boy, that t shirt. Uh take well, on <laughs> Do you not know what I'm referring to? <laughs> no, I'm wolfing because oh god oh. That's horrible oh like i get it that is that ranks probably on the top 10 all-time cringiest wwe t-shirts for those of you unaware uh they released a new seth rollins t-shirt that says the man's man <laughs> oh boy Stop. um if you go on twitter i have to find um where is he oh shit um, I can't find it, but uh, the guy Alan, on uh, who does like the wrestling tweets and stuff like that, I, I, excuse me, but um, there's a tr- uh, a thread that he did of like the worst wrestling T-shirts. There's a decent amount of TNA shirts in there as well. But, oh, that one AJ Styles yeah, always it, comes it's to gonna... mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was in there. It's got to be, but. Where is it? Alan. There it is. Alan Cheapshot. E L L A N underscore Cheapshot. Um, he's a good follow. He's a little crotchety sometimes in regards to the wrestling business, but there's a lot of gifs and uh, threads that he does, kind of throwback type stuff. And one of the things that he did a little while back was <clears throat> the worst t shirts in like wrestling history type thing. So hmm. I will find that somewhere. Hmm. But okay. yeah. Nice. That, that, that was a, that was a path that didn't need to be going down. No. So I'll shut up now. and can, <laughs> let you continue. <laughs> no, it's interesting. I have to find that. I do enjoy bad. Yeah, merch. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. For um, I don't know if you know this backstory, of this match, Tom, I don't, uh, in case you're not aware, uh, Seth and Becky are dating. No, Really? Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I didn't know if Michael Cole had screamed it into your head 300 times every Monday. <laughs> um, Boy, they certainly keep the belts here, don't they? <laughs> um, Yeah. You can't have Baron Corbin as a champion, and that's almost as bad as uh, Lacey Evans as champion. Unless... Unless they win and then Brock cashes in on Baron Corbin. <laughs> or he cashes in on Lacey Evans. Do it! <laughs> Brock is your not new Raw Women's Champion. <laughs> no? Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted because I found <laughs> the tweet that you're looking for and the AJ shirt is oh, the on AJ that shirt. list. <laughs> 
that's the worst wrestling shirt of all time, in my opinion. Oh, boy. Uh, so I found a thread and just... Uh, some of the... <laughs> God, you just text me the picture of it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, there's the Carlito spit. Do you spit or swallow shirt? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, edgy. Jay storm. I drink beer with your mom while your dad watches. (laughs) (laughs) So edgy. Uh, got the, there's a lot of nineties, um, attitude era shirts in here. Uh, Godfather. Don't say no. Just say ho shirt <laughs> oh man uh, the china the china shirt i do not remember that one at all what? <laughs> probably for good reason yeah the the whole thread that's called we'll, we'll retweet it out yeah uh, oh man so that's extreme rules. Yeah. Um, so I was going to bring up the network. Yes, hidden gems. Uh, while I while I keep uh, plugging Twitter accounts uh, at WWE underscore network underscore bot is a. Uh, account that just tweets out whenever something's been updated to the network. Cool. It's damn handy because, I mean, you can live without the, oh, NXT got uploaded. You know, not a big deal. But, like, when Mm -hmm. they do the hidden gems type stuff, and you don't necessarily know this. So there's a couple of hidden gems that got uploaded yesterday. One of them is, I think, a Sabu tryout match in WWE. Um, hmm. but it's how I find out about the, uh, hidden gem stuff for the most part. So on July 4th, they introduced, I, I had mentioned before the Crockett cup that got introduced in 86. Um, they also released the, um, two matches, uh, two matches, two cards from the great American bash tour of 86, from Crockett as well. For whatever reason, the Great American Bash was a pay-per-view or a super card, I'll say, for Crockett back in 85. I don't think it went back to 84. But for whatever reason, in 86, they were like, you know what? The Great American Bash is awesome. Let's have it in every city. So Mm -hmm. they did higher Great American Bash tour. Instead right. of having one big card, they had, and it wasn't the same card in every location, but it was it was really cool because I can remember reading the Pro Wrestling Illustrated that kind of went over the whole thing, and you'd see they'd have like Ric Flair kept the title for almost the entire tour and until uh, Dusty took it from him at like the very end, which I believe is the second. Uh, the show that they had in Greensboro. Mm-hmm. So they have two to- uh, uh, shows from this tour. One in Greensboro, 726, 1986. The other one in Charlotte, which was uh, the 5th of July. I, I've only watched the Charlotte one. It's, I mean, just, just old school. If you like that Crockett NWA stuff, it is... It's choice, and there's no commentary. Again, just kind of like the uh, the uh, Crockett Cup beforehand. It's just straight matches all the way through. You, you know, you get the ring announcements, that type of thing. But I mean, they had like a tape fist match between Tully Blanchard and Ron Garvin, which, if you've ever wondered what a tape fist match is, for whatever reason, well, Ron Garvin was hands of stone, so he had the whole thing of. Like, I can punch you once, knock you out type thing. So for whatever reason, they tape the fist, which should make the punches harder. 
but they it was treated like a boxing match. There were like 10 three-minute rounds. So they did a whole thing. They had corner man. Um, Ron Garvin's corner man was Wahoo McDaniel. Tully's was, of course, J.J. Dillon. I mean, there's blood in this because that's what happens. You bust somebody open with punches. But it was weird seeing in a tape fist match how Ronnie Garvin, whose finisher was literally, I punch you in the head, you're knocked out cold, hitting Tully Blanchard like 74 times with these same punches and Tully's okay. <laughs> so the logic of the match is completely thrown out the door. But I mean, just, I mean, they had, we were talking before about matches that didn't necessarily seem to have backstory, but they just were. They had a um, no holds barred match, and you could tell it was no holds barred because, as was the time, both wrestlers were in jeans, cowboy boots, and t shirts. Ah, of course. Really for their safety. Because you never wear gear, wrestling gear, for a no holds barred match. Uh, which was extremely weird to see Baron Von Raschke dressed like that. <laughs> right. So basically you had, he fought uh, Manny Fernandez. Manny Fernandez always pretty much looked like he had the jeans and the boots and the like sleeveless muscle tee type thing going on. He always looked like that. But you put the Baron in that gear, he just looks like a gym teacher. Because he kind of had, like, I don't think he had jeans on necessarily. He had, like, whatever. But, like, almost baggier pants, like sweatpants type thing. And then, like, a regular sleeved t-shirt. So he just, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, a whole bunch of good stuff on there. Um, the Charlotte uh, show was main evented with um, uh, Ric Flair defended his title against Ricky Morton. Which Flair and Morton actually had a really good feud going where uh, the Rock and Roll Express, for whatever reason, decided to feud with the Horsemen because that's what you did. And they did this whole thing where uh, Flair would make fun of the Rock and Roll Express because Flair's women were real women. And the Rock and Roll Express, all they could get with these teeny boppers. And they had an angle where Flair actually came out and proceeded to go, hey, you know, one of your girls threw this at me the other night, and I think it was meant for you. And he pulls out, like, a training bra <laughs> and, like, throws it in Ricky Morton's face. And Ricky goes nuts and starts hammering back. And then, like, uh, Ricky ended up, like, they had, like, an impromptu match. And Ricky ended up winning the match. So that was the whole thing. Like, oh, crap, Ricky Morton can actually beat Ric Flair. So they did the whole thing. And then Flair attacked Morton, like, the following week and, like, broke his nose. So they did a whole thing. They actually, I don't know if they actually broke his nose or not. But, like... They, like, smash his head into the studio, like, floor, and he's, like, like me, uh, like mushing it back and forth, and you actually see the blood on the floor. So I don't know if they kind of, like, smacked him in there a little bit too hard, and it was... Uh, I remember it freaking me out as a kid, like, watching it, like, oh, crap, they actually did it. And Ricky, for the entire month or two, wrestled with, like, one of those face shield with the like how basketball players kind of wear now but like it was like all white in the front so it was protecting his nose but yeah that was kind of the payoff of this match and flair ended up winning the match spoiler ricky morton was not nwa world heavyweight champion <laughs> right but um uh, two really good cards uh, on the network so if again if you're a fan of the old school nwa crockett type stuff definitely seek these out cool and that has been work rate rambling on old wrestling for the <laughs> week there you go well uh, ramble a little bit more and tell the people where they can find you on the internet go on the twitter machine at mr work rate at mr work rate uh 
Although if you catch me there, I'll be rambling more about the collective bargain agreement of hockey and <laughs> various other things. Cause that's what we do during the off season. Mm-hmm. I wrote two articles for section 328.com about stuff, but uh, please you find me on Twitter. Ask me about wrestling stuff. Cause I will start rambling about that and making followers leave me, but I don't care. There you go. Because I'd love to talk about the graphs. I still have that uh, that White Claw article I need to write. <laughs> Got to get on that this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on the inter- internet at JC Bobbitt, J C B O B B I T T, wherever finer social media is purveyed. Uh, you can find the show on Twitter at Cheaters and VR Pin. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, give us a follow or a big blue thumbs up there and tell us how much you like us. Uh, we'll be very busy this weekend on the Twitter, so come come say hello. Absolutely. Don't be scared. We don't bite that hard on Twitter. Is that you or me? What? I think that was me. What happened? <laughs> no, you said Twitter, and for whatever reason, my Twitter made a sound. So. Oh. Yeah. It was not me, for sure. Anyway, uh, so we'll be back next week to now to break apart and break down everything that we just talked about just it, smash it smash it into pieces. Pieces. yes <laughs> all of the hopes and dreams that we built for you today for the next 48 hours in professional wrestling uh <laughs> we're going to destroy them <laughs> uh yep so that's another episode of the cheaters never pin podcast in the books for you uh so we'll catch you next week my name's jc i'm tom and we'll catch you on the flip side <laughs>